हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल माय सर पराग जांबुलकर इन लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन हाउ टू इंप्लीमेंट सॉकेट प्रोग्रामिंग इन जावा लैंग्वेज वी हैव सीन कनेक्शन ओरिएंटेड सॉकेट प्रोग्रामिंग आल्सो वी हैव सीन कनेक्शनलेस सॉकेट प्रोग्रामिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस वन मोर टर्म दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सीरियलाइजेशन वी विल आल्सो डिस्कस व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ सीरियलाइजेशन सो फर्स्ट थिंग व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय सीरियलाइजेशन Before that, we have to see one concept that is called as object state. Object is what it is an instance of class. Class is a collection of variables and methods. So, object-oriented programming it relates everything to the real life object. Whatever the parameters related to that object are called as variables, and whatever the operations we perform over that parameters or over the variables. we call them functions or in java language we call them methods so basically class have the variables and methods object is an instance of class in the sense suppose there is a class name class with name sample and suppose we created three objects s1 s2 s3 so s1 will have different values of variables s2 have the different copy of the variable while s3 have the different copy another copy of those variables so that is called as the object state so at particular time instance whatever the values allocated to the variables of that particular object is called as the object state keep in mind i am telling at a particular time instance because as program executes over the period of time values of variables may get changed so that's why i am saying at a particular time instance whatever the values those are allocated to those variables which called as the object state now saving the object state is called as a serialization saving the object state or translating the object state into another format that is called as a serialization or in short saving object state we call them serialization now where we can save we require some memory right so for saving we can use file or we can use any buffer so we are saving in some memory so saving the object state is called as a serialization now what is the use we we'll see here what are the uses of serialization so basically there are three uses of serialization the first one persistence of data persistence of data in the sense maintaining the data over the period of time suppose you want to maintain in a data record so that is called as a persistence of data so as we are saving the object state we are persisting or we are saving the values or we are saving the data for longer time that is the first application second application is related to the networking we can transmit or we can transfer or we can send object or object state from one node to the another node from client to server or from server to client so we can transfer object state from one node to another node so whenever we have to send so many values from client to server so instead of transferring value one by one we can create a class we can put all those variables in that class we will allocate some values to the uh, value uh, variables of that particular class and we can save we can send that object state to the another node we will see example for that then third application is to detect changes in the data over the period of time for example suppose we have written one program for any application uh, related to weather and suppose variables are like that uh, temperature and humidity so at morning there will be some temperature and humidity at afternoon there will be some value for temperature and humidity at evening time again there will be some value for temperature and humidity so this values will get changed over the period of time right so to detect the change in the values over the period of time we can use serialization so at morning time we can save the state of the object at afternoon time we can save the state of the object at evening time we can save the state of the object and we can uh, check how data value uh, values are getting changed over the period of time 
so these are the three advantages of serialization first is the persistence of data in the sense we can maintain the data for over the longer time then we can send data from one node to the another node or from you can send object state from one node to another node over the network and third application is to detect the changes in the values of the variables of object so these are the three advantages of serialization then next term is deserialization so from name you will come to know it is a reversal process of serialization opposite to serialization so what do we serialization saving object state into some memory is called as serialization so what do we mean by deserialization retrieving back values of object from the memory is called as deserialization saving the values of object state into some memory serialization retrieving back values of an object state from the memory is called as deserialization now we'll see how serialization and deserialization is achieved so for serialization this class is used update output stream while for deserialization this class is used object input stream we will see example for that so this concept will be clear and these classes are available in this package java.io we will see example for that so this concept will be clear now look at this here we have created one class sample and inside that we have declared we have defined two variables i and j here one thing you will find out implement serializable so afterwards i will explain it but keep in mind we have created one class sample and there we have created two variables i and j now we want to save state of object of this class so here we have allocated value 5 to i and 11 to j for saving we have created this file pointer or file reference and it is pointing to sam.txt suppose this file is present there so it will access that file if no file with the same name is present there so it will create that file now see as that i have told we have for serialization we have to use this class object output stream class while for deserialization we have to use object input stream class so this class is linked with FOS. FO is what? It is object of file output stream and this is linked with this F. F is a reference for this file. It is pointing to the this file. So basically uh, by using this object we are doing operations on or uh, we are accessing this file. Now see there is one method called a write object this method of this class object output stream so by using this object we are calling it and we are passing this object obj obj object is this this is the object of this class and we are allocating values 5 and 11 so by this we have saved the value 5 there and we have also saved the value 11 there for j now for retrieving back that i have told we have to use class object input stream so it is linked with fis fis is what it is a file input stream object and it is linked with f f is what it is a reference for this file so anyhow this is pointing to this file and by using this object os we are reading the values of object whatever the values that object state is saved in this file now see whatever the values are written those are of type class sample so that's why we are costing it and we are creating another object of sample class where these values will be saved. So while saving we are using use obj object we have saved object obj we are retrieving it and we are copying those values to the object obj1 and then we are printing this value. Now that one question why we are implementing this serial algebra. As there is the word implements, you will come to know it is an interface. Serializable is an interface. So normally interface is of no use because all methods are abstract, variables are constant. Here, serializable is a marker interface. Marker interface in the sense, it is the interface which is used to mark something, to symbolize something. And for what purpose we are marking? Here we are telling that 
this class we are going to serialize serialize in the sense we are going to save state of that particular object we are marking it we are telling the compiler that we want to save state of this particular class in general there is a bad convention of saving object state just for security purpose generally programming languages don't allow to save state of any object so whenever we have to save state of object we have to mark it we have to mark it serializable or we have to mention it we want to save state of that particular object of that particular class so we have to mark that class as a serializable class now we will run it java c serializable example so it got compiled now we will run okay so it got the values so we have saved i value and g value and we are retrieved back so we have saved this value in a file and then we have retrieved back and suppose if we remove this we will save it and again we will run it so it got compiled and when we run it it is showing the error that this class is not serializable so for that class we have to mention it it is a serializable class So again, if you run it, so it will get compiled and run. We got the output. Now see, we have done serialization and deselection in the same program. We have saved object state in a file. We have seen one application of serializable serialization that we can transfer the object state over the network. We can send some data our object over the network so we'll see how to use it so we have written one program for client and one program for server in the same way how we are doing the socket program in same program we have to write only thing is we are doing serialization and deserialization so in this example we are doing serialization on client side and deserialization on server side so look at this here one class is written and we are marking it as a serializable class there are three variables are the name city and contact now we have allocated some values to these variables then for serialization we are using object output stream class in the same way in previous example that we have seen it is pointing to whom os os is the object of output stream and it is linked with the socket Okay. Now we want to save our state of obj object. So for this object output stream object OS, we are calling this method write object, and we are passing this obj. So values are saved here. OS we are passing to the OS, and that will be sent over the socket over the network. On server side, we are using object input stream class object OIS is the object of object input stream which is pointing to the IS and IS is pointing to the socket programming okay and here we are retrieving the values so for retrieving the values we are using read object method so here we have created class sample and we are passing the object of sample class and again this side will retrieve back it so that's why we have also declared this sample clause on server side. So we'll retrieve the values and we'll save here. So it is reading or this is retrieving class object of sample class and we are saving it. So we have created one more object of this class. But this class is different. This class is defined on server side and this class is defined on client side. Okay. So we have retrieved and then we are printing the so what we have done from client side we have created one class we have allocated some values and that we are passing to server and on server side we are reading the values 
and we are printing it so we will run this program so suppose this is for server and we will take one more terminal for a client so we will run server program Okay, we will run okay now we will run client program So here we have sent some values to the server side and server has printed the value. So on client side we have seen these values. Here you can see on client side we have allocated some values and these values we have passed from client to server and on server side we are printing this value while other code is same. So whatever code we write for socket programming in Java language, that is same. So on server side, we are creating two socket, one for creating the connection and another for sending and receiving the messages. While on client side, there is a one socket object. So this is how we can write program for sending object over a network and we can send some group of data. So for example, see, uh, suppose on client side, there is one form. We are taking value of name, suppose uh, college, city, all those things, and we want to send these values to the server side. So we can use serialization. So this group of values, we can save it in some class variables, and we can pass object of that particular class to the another node. So this is the concept called serialization. So I have written. Uh, one post for that i will po uh, provide this link in description box from there you can take this program code so friends i hope you like this video if yes then click on like subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press bell icon so that you will get notifications of my next video so stay connected thank you